What's up guys, Shane here from Figured 3D Printing. Today, we're gonna work on the FT5 and we're gonna install the Franken Shuttle. Welcome back guys. So if you're not familiar with the Franken Shuttle, one of the guys, Jeremy, in the Folger Tech group developed this a long time ago and actually he's actually stopped developing it, sadly. Uh, it, I think it's a great model. If you can't get a full aluminum extruder uh, carriage for the, or X carriage they're going to call us, for the FT5, you can 3D print your own. This is printed out of PETG, which is a very, very strong material, like ABS, but easier to print in my opinion. So I've printed all the parts here and I will do a little time lapse so you guys can see how those went. I was able to do it just pretty much in two prints on the FT5 because you can fit most of the parts on there. It actually comes with quite a lot of different parts. I'm actually using the modular one here. There's actually two little thumb flips we're going to call them right here that you can do and this comes off so if you did have another extruder that you wanted to put on here or a different setup you wanted use a different motor you can easily do that flip these two toggles again and it is in there super duper tight no wiggle whatsoever now the reason why i'm doing this is because the ft5's carriage well, i guess the carriage doesn't wiggle but the extruder actually does now because of that wiggle prints are I mean, my prints are pretty accurate. I have a, the printer honed in very well, in my opinion, and I think I get great prints, but they could be just a little bit better. And the carriage is what offers that little bit of wiggle because the extruder is just sandwiched in there. Uh, the motor is sandwiched between basically this front plate and the back plate on the stock melanine parts. And it's not that it's wood, it's just the fact that they are not, it's not anchored anywhere very well. This will actually anchor it in and make it a much more rigid setup and a much better setup. Now again, just to explain the different parts on this, we have the front plate, we have this little plate right here, which again is modular, you can take it off, take it, put it back on. There's another one for a large body stepper motor. Since I have the Titan extruder, I am gonna be upgrading to the shorter body NEMA uh, 17 motor, and so that will have a little bit less power needed in order to make that work, it provides just enough torque. A lot of things go into that, but anyways, it works out well. Then you have your two plates for spacers, and then the cable chain will mount right to the top of this and come off, and all my cables will go on just like they are right now. And then here on the back is the back plate, but also there's a secondary back plate right here, which holds on to this scorpion style cooler. Now this cooler has four jets that come out and will actually surround the hot end. It'll be right here because it's offset on the Titan. Uh, again, it's hard to see just the bulk in here. Uh, but it's it's offset so the nozzle should end up right here between these four jets right on there providing great cooling from a lot of different angles you know the four angles right there great coverage so you're going to get great cooling for the prints and the filaments that really need that so without further ado let's rip off the old one and then figure out how we're going to get this one on there and go from there all right it's about the best angle i'm going to be able to get but taking off this off is going to be super simple uh, there are four bolts that hold this on. Well, actually two that hold it on and then two that go here through the top. So those are pretty easy to get out. We're gonna take apart the Titan extruder first, get that all out of the way, and then we can take off the actual carriage here. And then we can take off these final top two, disconnect the cable chain, and again, should be pretty simple. So let's get to it. Once we have it off, cut the belts, just the zip ties. That way this will come off nice and easy. One side, other side. And there it is. And actually, because I haven't taken this off in forever, you can see there are two bolts here on the back that hold on the extruder, but it does have some wiggle room, even though those are pretty doggone tight. Now if we look at this, we still need to replace that part there. So we need to get this taken off. Okay, and there is the top part off there. We can take this off. And then these four screws can come out. Maybe. And then there's two lock wishers in here for these guys. All 
And there's the other little piece, this spacer, which we will no longer need with this new setup. All right, so let us get a few things here reattached. All right, so here I've got the new plate on. I'm gonna reattach it to the slider now, and then we can start putting the carriage back together. Right, here it is, slides like a champ, just like it should. And now we can start putting the rest of it together. Okay, so the core shuttle here is on. So you can see we have the quick disconnect paddles here, little thumb screws, we'll call them. Those just flip around. And the front and the back, top and bottom, are all mounted on there. I did actually mount this cable chain on backwards. I had it over here, and it was hitting this cable chain, which did not allow it to hit the end stop. But now it hits without a problem. Just gonna have to kind of shorten on my wires and make everything a little bit neater here in a minute. But at least the core you know, shuttle part is on. Now all I have to do is add my uh, E3D Titan to this, which I can do not on here, and then I can just slide it right on it, which makes installing this super duper easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I'm not gonna video that because putting it together is simple instructions from E3D, but once I get that together, then we can see what it looks like when it's put up on there. All right, so here it is, fully assembled here. Kinda give you a little bit of a view of it the sides here you can see the the two swore uh, you know like I said like the captive nut thingies that you spin to get it on there right here you see the clearance on that thing is close super close you really need a sock to make that work out well but it's all on there now and you see the BL touch is added on there I have not uh, decided if I'm gonna wire it up but I figured I might as well add it on there so it's on there. And uh, of course I had to switch back to my stock E3D V6 shroud here for the throat, the heat break there in order to cool all that down. Well, one thing I don't like about this motor is it is leads. So I will need to cut the leads on both of these and redo all of that. But I have my other, my other quick disconnects all work out just fine. Let's see, I'll show you down here the fan shroud comes up and around here it's so hard to see but right back here I need another set of these turn nuts that are right there I need another set of those back there that's what holds the back end of this one I thought it was by friction but it's not so I just need to reprint those but that will not be an issue to add on to later all right, so now that it's on, I need to work on this wiring. So I'm gonna do that here for a little bit. I'm not gonna bore you with the video, but when I come back, this should look spot on, I hope. We'll see you back in a second. So you can see, it's finally installed. Everything looks good. If we look here from where the build plate used to be, it's about a 40 millimeter difference, which is pretty nice. So now I need to move the end stop up so that I can re-level the bed. And I'm actually probably gonna go ahead and wire some of these up for the BL Touch in the future. Might as well just do it now and have the connections there. And then I can always connect it in the back later. Oh, well, I think that went pretty well. So I have, you know, a few of the extra parts here that I had printed because I wasn't sure when I printed this like three months ago, how exactly I wanted to use everything. But one thing I did want to note for those of you that are gonna print this, or if you do decide to print this, this is the base for not having the hot swap. So this is the front of the Franken shuttle. The standard NEMA 17 motor that comes, I should say the stock extruder motor that comes with the FT5 fits in here perfectly and it's flush in the back. Now, if you're gonna use the hot swap one, which is right here, it does not sit flat. It actually rises off the back and this does not work with this extruder. So or I should say this plate does not work with the sock extruder if you're looking to do that. The short body or AKA the pancake stepper motor that you would use with a Titan extruder does fit both the standard front, which is the same as this one here. So you could just use this as the front and it also fits the hot swap one, which I currently have on there. I like the idea of the hot swap one simply because I can pull that off, do any work on it and then put it back on with ease. It's sometimes gonna be really a painful to get an extruder off if you have a major problem and working on it. I have the FT5 enclosed, it's just a pain. But anyways, I will link the files for the 
Frank and Shuttle, which are hosted on Jeremy's share drive, or his Google Drive, I should say. I wanna say big thanks to Jeremy for designing this. He worked on this for months. Sadly, he's no longer a member of the Folger Tech group. He kinda had enough of things going on in there. He's now on other forms that you can find him, but he has still left his files up for download, so I will link them down below. If you have any questions on this, please let me know, and I will try and help you out with as much as I've printed it and using it. So one thing I did wanna know, I did print all of this in PETG. I didn't feel PLA would be appropriate, uh, simply because it's not really that, I mean, strong, but PETG is so much stronger. So using PETG on this is a great option. If you have the capability of printing ABS, I'm sure ABS would also work out well, but my personal recommendation is PETG. So one thing I wanted to mention was the Z height that I gained back from switching to this carriage style. So this is the stock extruder carriage the X carriage, as you can see, mine is actually bent. It might be a little hard to see this far, but mine's actually bent because I tightened it down a little bit too much and it cracked. It held it well enough, but it was you know, obviously on its last leg. But right here is where your extrusion sits. On the new one, oh, let's finish this. So this is where the extrusion sits on this and your extruder sits below the extrusion. That's where your motor sits, way down here. So you also have a little bit of lag down there because there has so much more momentum when this motor starts moving. On the Franken shuttle, your extruder motor sits up much higher. The extrusion is right behind where your motor is. So it is having a much more direct impact, or I should say much more direct control over the momentum that happens when this extruder moves, when this motor moves. This motor is very, very heavy. Granted, I'm using the pancake motor now so I can move faster with less of that. And that's where jerk settings, acceleration settings come into play to adjust things to play. But you can print so much faster the lighter your extruder is, which is why a lot of people like Bowden setups, simply because the extruder is just the nozzle flying around printing, the actual motor that is running it is stationary somewhere else on your printer. So yeah, I just wanted to add that. I've put a little picture up on my Instagram to show that I gained roughly f just shy, I would say just shy of 40 millimeters of build height back. So I'm gonna have to run the whole thing again, readjust my firmware to re-up my max build height because obviously it was a little less using the non-stock stuff. But now it's more than it was when I was stock, which is great. I am super happy about that. So again, this was a very successful project and I hope that it works out well for the long run. All right guys, thanks for watching. If you found this useful and if you wanna go ahead and do this, give the video a like. If you didn't, dislike, let me know down below what I can do better next time. If you wanna support the channel, best thing to do is subscribe down below. All the subscriptions really do help. If you wanna support me financially, down here below is Patreon. Go ahead and click on that. Don't even dollar more, greatly appreciate it. Current Patreons, guys are always awesome. If you wanna support me without spending your money, there's a bunch of affiliates down below. Update your bookmarks, use those for your daily shopping. I appreciate it. When you do your shopping, a little slice of it comes here to me in order to support the channel. I thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, happy printing.